Hi, I'm Ksenia from Guiding Star with Ksenia. Thanks so much for joining me for this special series all about Saturn and his transits through each of the houses in the horoscope. Some of you might be familiar with a video I've done in the past all about Saturn and his transit through the sign of Aquarius and where that's going to fall for each sign. This video series may be a little similar to that. We might cover similar topics of information. But there will also be more depth in this series. So I thank you for joining me for this ongoing series throughout this autumn. Can I also just say I would be so honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and support the work that I do here in growing the knowledge of astrology throughout Australia and the world. So what is Saturn? First of all, Saturn is the seventh planet out from the sun when we include the sun in this counting. Uh, astrologically. Saturn is also the last of the visible planets that we can see with the naked eye in the sky at night. Beyond Saturn, to see Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, we need a telescope. And so it's considered in ancient astrology that Saturn is the planet that actually correlates, the final frontier if you like, that correlates to our visible earthly reality, the manifested reality on planet Earth in this incarnation. Beyond that, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto all uh, have correlations to our inner self, our psyche, our past lives, our, our wounds, our uh, personal issues and our, the way we think about things and the way we integrate things into our lives. So it's, they are very psychological energies, whereas up until Saturn, we have both psychological things happening from those planets, but also material manifestation happening from the planets that we can see. It's an old hermetic principle, which is called as above, so below, as without, so within. What we see in the sky above us is reflected in our reality on the earth and the old uh, principle taken further is also what is going on energetically within our soul and our psyche is also reflected on the outer uh, in our earthly life as well. So Saturn being the furthest planet out as a material planet, as a planet of manifestation, governs most strongly what happens on planet Earth and for our individual journeys as well. And the reason that is, is that the further out you go with the planets, the more impact that they have on our lives here on Earth. That might seem a little bit odd. We, would ordin we might ordinarily think that the closer the planet, the, the greater impact it would have on us. Therefore, Venus should be the most impactful planet of all. But that's not the case in astrology. And it's to do with the, the time and the speed of a particular planet. With Saturn, its movement is so slow that the energy has time to build and therefore really pack a punch. Where Venus or the Moon, if you want, for example, as well, they whiz around the, the astrological chart very quickly. The Moon goes around in one month. Venus goes around in approximately give or take a year, depending on whether she goes retrograde or not. But Saturn takes 30 years to do a cycle of the astrological chart. And therefore, the energy has a lot of time to accumulate in one spot. And therefore, we feel the impact most strongly. Saturn, as with all planets, has things that it rules, things that it governs in this earthly reality that we experience. Saturn rules over structures, organizations, hierarchies, governments, regulations and rules. Saturn is also known as Father Time. He governs time here on planet Earth. There are some realms where time doesn't matter. Time is immaterial. But here on planet Earth, we are governed by time as a spirit being manifested into human material form. We are governed by time and Saturn is the master of time. Saturn also represents things like responsibility, duty, hard work, maturity, perseverance and endurance in life. These are all actually really great things and we tend to receive the blessing of these Saturn positive qualities when we start getting into our mid to late 30s. That's when Saturn matures in, in Vedic astrology. He reaches his maturation and when he reaches his maturation essentially 
we learn how to carry our burdens in life and everyone at some point needs to learn that lesson. Certainly by the age of 35, 36, when Saturn matures, we step into our full adulthood. We're no longer young adults, we're no longer children, we have fully reached maturity and hopefully, if we're manifesting at a high level, we've learnt how to carry our burdens. Saturn represents structures, as I said, but also traditions. He is the master of the legacy we want to leave behind as well. He, he has a connection with the 10th house in astrology, which is all about legacy that we want to leave for those who come after us. He also has a connection to authority figures and those in authority over us. Saturn on the more negative side of his energy rules restriction and blockage, fear, holding things back, keeping things from us and starving us of the things we like, but also equally starving us of the negative things in life if he is making a particular aspect in our natal chart. In astrology, Saturn is the ruler of two signs traditionally, the sign of Capricorn mainly, and then in traditional astrology, the sign of Aquarius. In modern astrology, Uranus is considered to be the ruler of the sign of Aquarius, but in traditional astrology, Capric sorry, Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn and Aquarius. In archetypal astrology, Saturn is seen as the boss figure, the CEO. Because I like things to be a bit lighter and a bit more fun, I kind of envisage Saturn as kind of the head of uh, control in the Get Smart series. If you're familiar with the chief, he's managing all these bumbling idiots all around him trying to catch the bad guys. And here is the chief just trying to keep everything under control, managed, well organized, well structured and adhering to what needs to happen and the rules and principles of control in the series Get Smart. But he's still likable. A lot of people will paint Saturn to be the, the boogeyman of the horoscope. He's out to get you, he makes life tough, he's, he's, you know, he's negative. And certainly some streams of astrology see him as the great malefic. I kind of liken him instead to the great father figure in the sky. If you imagine a father who's, uh, you know, you, you, his daughter or son is 16 and they're about to go out to a party and dad, the father figure, is sitting there and uh, as they run out the front door and says, hang on, what time are you going to be home? Where are you going? I want the phone number of the place where you're going to be. Are there going to be any other adults at the party? You know, you've got to do things properly, buy the book, there's no, no more being, no being silly and I want you home by 10 o'clock. And the children are like, oh, Dad. But Dad's strict and firm and doesn't budge an inch. He sets boundaries. He says, no way, home by 10 o'clock. Not, you're not going to be one of those children who's out running around the streets at all hours of the night getting up to no good. So he is this protector father figure energy, authority figure energy in the horoscope. Now, sometimes we see people manifesting Saturn in a very negative way. They are the authority figure with abuse and violence and control. Now, often that would indicate a connection with Mars in a chart if that's how it was playing out. But then there are other people who manifest beautiful Saturn energy that's benevolent. That is, you know, lots of boundaries, lots of regulations and rules, but it's for your greater good. It's for your upliftment. It's for the betterment of yourself society humanity whatever so there are there are many ways Saturn can manifest but he is always the energy of this protector father figure even in karmic astrology Saturn represents our fears that we have from previous incarnations for example if you happen to fall off and many people have had readings with me will have heard this analogy if you happen to in a past life fall off the Grand Canyon to plummet to your death and then you reincarnate and you've got this fear of heights you can't explain, that's Saturn putting protective boundaries of fear in place so that you don't go and fall off the, <laughs> the, the Grand Canyon again and plummet to your death in the next life. So he is very much about our psychic protection or, or karmic protection and sometimes people see him as a representation of uh, karmic blockage based on the, the hurts and the wounds and the fears we've experienced in past incarnations. 
according to the reading I've done, Saturn rules the uh, the gemstone qualities of obsidian, uh, also tourmaline and hematite, the heavy black stones that are, in the case of tourmaline, especially particularly good at absorbing energy. Saturn also correlates to the color brown, which is why for this series I'm dressing in very autumnal tones of brown. And as a ruler of the earth sign of Capricorn, Saturn is a very earthy type of planet and it has a lot of earth energy about him. And so one of the remedies that we can offer for any Saturn troubled times is to be in nature or to walk barefoot on the earth. Saturn also rules rocks and gravelly soil and rocky places. Isolated places do come under Saturn's governance occasionally as well. So to be in those places is actually to be in a Saturnian environment or to live in a, a garden full of rocks or a house that's made of stone is a very Saturnian uh, environment to live in. Saturn also governs things like uh, minimalism and restraint and restriction. If we were to have Saturn sitting permanently in our first house, then we might find that our body was restricted in some way, either um, through, uh, you know, our, our, our size is restricted or our height. So our, either our outward uh, expression or our upward expression would be restricted. Uh, Saturn would be affecting our body in that way. So he rules restriction and restraint. So that's a little in a nutshell picture of what Saturn as a planet represents. Now we're going to dive into what it means to have Saturn transiting through the houses. But first let's start with an explanation of how to assess where Saturn is according to whole sign astrology by transit. So how do you tell where Saturn is sitting in your chart? Well, first of all, you need to go to a platform like say planetwatcher.com, which will tell you where Saturn is currently at this point in time. Now, as I'm recording this, Saturn is sitting in the sign of Aquarius. However, in about two and a half to three years time, he'll be in Pisces. And then three years after that, he'll be in Aries. And three years after that, roughly, he'll be in Taurus and so on around the horoscope. So you do need to check out where he is transiting, moving through at this current point in time. We are looking for the eighth house. So how do we figure out if we are having a transit of Saturn in our eighth house? Basically, in this case, we'll be Cancer rising, we'll be having a 8th house Saturn transit for the next three years. But we count, we work out what our rising sign is in whole sign astrology and we count eight houses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in whole sign astrology and that gets us to our 8th house. If Saturn happens to be in the sign that is your 8th house, then you are having a transit of Saturn to your 8th house and this video is the video for you. So in this case, at the time I'm recording this, Cancer people will be having an 8th house Saturn transit as Saturn goes through Aquarius. But look, if in a couple of years when Saturn moves into Pisces, it will be Leo people who have this 8th house transit happening in of Saturn to their 8th house. So you can see how that works. You need to know where Saturn currently is and you need to figure out what your rising sign is. That is going to tell you what house Saturn is transiting through and in this case this video is looking at the transit of Saturn through the 8th house. What's that going to mean? Well, Saturn is restriction and blockage and of course the 8th house has to do with our desire nature, what we desire, what we want. It's a desire house, a karma house. It also is a house of personal power. So we can expect that during this two and a half year to three year sometimes transit, there's going to be a restriction and a blockage of those things in our life. It is actually a time when we start to question our motives in life. Why are we doing what we're doing? What's our main uh, sort of um, thrust for, for what we're undertaking? And we can have outside influences that come along at this time that actually pressure us 
to do this inner questioning of our motives and our intents. So when that happens during this transit, embrace it because it's a refining process, a restructuring process brought about by Saturn's transit that's actually going to benefit you in the long run. One thing that is often seen by the eighth house is our, you know, we all have a tendency from time to time to be a bit obsessive, to be a bit jealous. You know, we know what that feeling is like um, to sort of feel perhaps a bit domineering in some way. And it is when Saturn moves through the eighth house that those things, manipulation, our, uh, our obsessive nature, our jealous nature, if we are involved in sort of giving sort of a gaslighting energy to anyone or receiving it from anyone, that's going to show up at this time too. Any domineering behavior is going to be exposed now for what it is. Um, you are going to see it in other people. It's going to be clear to you in other people. Plus, if you're doing it to other people, you're going to get raked over the coals for that. It's going to be seen for what it is as well. And you'll, if you are experiencing this you're on the receiving end from other people of this type of behavior, you're going to say enough, no more, I'm not taking this, and you'll be able to walk away. Saturn will give you the strength during this transit to walk away and say, forget it, no more of this gaslighting behavior, I've, I, I, I won't tolerate it. And so you'll remove yourself from the situation. So this can be a very empowering transit if you need to deal with that sort of thing or the dom dominating behavior or manipulative behavior or something in your life it can be very very helpful it's a time when we can it's a very sensitive house the eighth house it's it, it's a very like it's a water house essentially and and water energy is very sensitive emotional energy and so there's this heightened sensitivity to saturn influences at this time and saturn is the influence of um, judgment and criticism so we might find that we're a bit sensitive to other people's criticism of us for this two and a half year period but there's a purpose to this. It's designed to get down deep into the psyche, into the self, in order to um, release sort of any deep attachments, any sort of unconscious desires that are sort of sitting around inside us and get, get them either out into the light and dealt with or released and thrown away, you know. So there is this, this heightened sensitivity is going to actually trigger things that are very important for us to address in that sense during this transit. It's a period that can be very psychologically painful uh, and, and difficult to undertake because we're doing all this inner work on our attachments and so forth. But if we let go of our ego, if we let go of our need to control everything, then the process is so much easier. There's so much more beneficial for us. So you can ask yourself a few questions at this time. It can be very supportive. Uh, you know, are there any inappropriate cravings that you are acting upon in your life that you need to stop acting upon? Are there any passions? Are there any obsessions that are causing you detriment and trouble and problems right now in your life? Well, they need to go. And now again, Saturn's going to give you the strength to deal with them, to absolve them and release them and let them go. So what Saturn is, Saturn is a malefic planet and the eighth house is a malefic house. So in this sense, you've got a malefic planet in a malefic house, which means they cancel each other out. It means you're not going to get, you know, uh, sort of tidal waves of malefic influence in your life. Rather, you're actually going to get the capacity to overcome difficult circumstances. That's what a malefic planet in a malefic house means. It gives you the power to release the difficulties and the problems. It gives you the strength and the endurance and the perseverance, which are Saturn energies, the authority within yourself to overcome the difficulties, the crises, the, the inner catharsis that needs to occur. So in that sense, it's a good transit to have. You'll be more structured about your approach to dealing with these things too. Um, now your individual, get my words out, your individuality um, can be very heavily scrutinized right now. As I said, um, there might be critiques coming to, to you from outer circumstances, from influential people in your life, and it might be hard to take and it might sort of hurt the ego a little bit, but it's for a, a, a very important purpose for refining you and, and developing you. But you're, Because your personality is going to be what is transformed by this transit. Um, at the end of this two and a half years, your personality will have been refined. Now, I look back and remember when I had this transit and it was um, during this transit that I got divorced. And who I was at the beginning of this transit was the 
almost polar opposite of who I was. At the end of this transit, my personality was just that reconstructed. And I, instead of being the meek little wife who did whatever she was told and, um, uh, you know, lived to please her husband, I actually started to stand on my own two feet. I knew who I was. I knew what I wanted my life to, to look like from then on. Um, and I was able to reshape things um, on my terms. It's a house of personal power uh, and, and taking back power. Often that comes through a crisis situation such as a divorce or some sort of um, upheaval or something. And, and we can learn to take our power back during this transit. But it, it may come with a lot of upheaval as I've already described. So uh, it, we are going to be transformed. Who we begin this transit as is not going to be who we end up being at the end of this uh, particular transit. But we will feel healthier at a psychological level. We'll feel more emotionally free. Um, we'll feel more psychologically balanced after this particular transit is, is done. And any old worn out behaviors or motives or attitudes, they're going to be expunged, excreted, as is the nature of this house. It has uh, connections to plumbing and um, composting and, and releasing and letting go. Now, one thing that's quite exciting about this transit <laughs> is the, that sex, if you're in a position to enjoy it, sex can take a real front seat row in your life because this is the house of sex. Hello. So it is going to be very important, but I underline the but. There could also be a lack of sex that comes from this transit because of course Saturn is restriction, Saturn is blockage, Saturn is holding things back. And that was certainly the case with this transit. For me, it was Tumbleweed City. For quite a while. <laughs> um, so even if you're in a relationship that's not on the skids and, and going through a divorce, um, there can still be some dysfunction sexually, which puts it in that front seat row. Suddenly you're giving your attention to the sexual realm, not for the best of reasons, but because you know there's, there's difficulty there, there's dysfunction or some sort of challenging sexual circumstances or um, sexual dynamic in a relationship that needs to be addressed and resolved at this time. So if you're, you've been in a relationship for a few years and it's sort of been a bit ho-hum sexually, well, it's actually going to get a spotlight shone on it when Saturn transits through the eighth house and you will restructure your sexual life in some way, maybe through addressing problems or um, confronting issues around that. Um, you know, for me, it was a, a case of, you know, tumbleweeds for, for two, two to three years, or maybe actually it was a lot more than that. It was really interesting, actually, because at the time I went through my divorce, a Saturn was at about three degrees of, um, uh, uh, of my eighth house. And it was like I could just feel the weight, the burden coming down onto my shoulders when I had that, that transit. Um, it was, I could almost tangibly pick it up and sort of squeeze that burden that was now being put on my shoulders. And part of that burden was the, the realization that the knowledge that, hey, I'm 35 here, but I know, I just had this inner knowing, in a sense, I'm going to spend the next however many years, it's turned out to be roughly a decade so far, <laughs> um, of, of just nothing with regard to sexuality. And I knew that that was coming and I could feel it being put on me and being put on my shoulders almost tangibly it was um pretty heavy in that sense now i don't mean to scare anybody i'm still alive i'm kicking <laughs> um life still goes on but um it can bring in sort of a, that those sorts of changes as well um and the best way to deal with it is to confront and address the issues so if there's an issue of lack or dysfunction or um a difficulty in sex don't be like me and run away and put your head in the sand and hide from the world. <laughs> uh, address things, sort things out, confront things with your partner or, or go to a therapist and do, this is a house of therapy, do therapy um, towards healing any of these dysfunctional things. But as I said, our physical passions are in, under the spotlight. Um, we're very conscious of our sexuality during this transit of Saturn through the eighth house actually. Um, we're conscious of how it relates to others and how we relate to others in a sexual way. It's a time for some, as it was for me, a period of sexual celibacy. 
Um, sometimes that's desired and we choose it. Sometimes it's through outer circumstances being enforced on us. Mostly it's the outer circumstances enforcing that on us when we're looking at the eighth house. Um, but whatever the case, sexuality will not be dealt with carelessly during this time. It will be dealt with in a Saturnian manner, maturely, um, consciously, seriously, somberly. So no careless sex. Certainly, you know, the, the, the whole idea of, you know, one night stands and sleeping around and what have you, with Saturn in the eighth house by transit, it's less likely to happen. You know, you, some people, if their charts are inclined that way, can happen to, you know, pull it off for the whole, um, literally and figuratively, for the whole duration of the transit if their charts are highly sexually charged. Um, but most people, the, the, the idea of, of one night stands and so forth, it just won't gel. It won't happen for them, um, even if they want it. And, and, and they experience it, it will leave an unsatisfactory taste in their mouth and they'll be like, I'm never doing that again. That sucked. Um, no comments there. But um, it, it is a, a, a sort of a, a very difficult time sexually, but for a purpose to teach us about who we are in that sexual realm, what we want in the sexual realm, um, how our behavior affects ourselves and others in the sexual realm. And these are important things to address. They're very, uh, you know, very, very well, much a part of our, our human experience. So they do need to be restructured and refined, purified even by Saturn's transit through this house so that when we come out the other side, we actually know better what we want. Now, if you are in a relationship prior to this transit and the relationship just is pathetic sexually and you're unhappy sexually in, in the relationship, then let me just tell you, the, the sexual arena and issues in that realm are only going to get worse and worse when this transit ha um, continues. But it's again, it's for a purpose. It will get worse until you elect to address the issues and restructure the sexual dynamic of your life. So if you want to avoid that happening, I would suggest going and seeing a therapist before we even get to this transit. Um, go and sort it all out sooner rather than later so those issues are not the big weighty burdens that they might otherwise be. Now, this is also the house of death and mortality. So we might be feeling very mortal during this time, during this transit for the two and a half to three year period. We, we, we come to terms with the idea of death and we realize that we are human. We will die one day. This life is but a blip, um, really, in the scheme of things. And we, we kind of get to realize how much we matter or don't matter in, in the great scheme of life on Earth. Um, but if we experience a death at this time, death of a pet, death of a loved one, death of a friend, even a you know an old schoolmate we hear who's passed away or something like that, it will affect us very, very deeply and very profoundly during this transit. But this is designed to give wisdom, to give insight and understanding that helps you confront your own ideas about death and mortality and maybe even life after death as well. There is a, a great deal of emphasis placed on the soul and the spirit during this couple of years. And you can expect to have growth in this area. You can expect to, um, to deepen in your perspective, to, to have a more mature perspective and a, a more ingrained understanding within you because that's what Saturn, Saturn wants to do. He wants to refine and restructure how you feel about certain things. And in this case, how you feel and approach the idea of death and dying as well as spirit and soul issues. Now, when Saturn transits through the eighth house, this is the house of receiving from others. And of course, Saturn is restriction and blockage. So we can experience a blockage or a restriction around receiving from other people. It's not a good time for getting inheritances. It's not a good time um, for going and getting a loan from the bank even. That, that's sort of receiving money from another source, an external source other than yourself. So getting loans, um, expecting a big tax return, uh, getting an inheritance from grandma, that, like, that is lessened at this time. Um, so if there are holdups with those sorts of things, if there are difficulties and challenges and obstacles with those sorts of things, you know where it's coming from during this transit. Now, if you can do so, and maybe by watching this video, it's almost too late, but by the time you're watching this, 
but if you can get rid of debt prior to this transit then please do so it's you know you will cope with this um, transit so much better if your debt is at a minimum certainly uh, again an, an illustration from my own life when I had this transit occurring um, we my ex-husband and I sold the house that we had together and paid off all our debts and paid off um, all our uh, you know our obligations and things like that so um, that was a, that was a good thing we, we made a fresh start uh, and I highly recommend doing that if you can um, it, it get rid of debt and, and that way you decrease your stress you decrease your worry um, that might happen with Saturn here Saturn is a planet of worry Saturn is a planet of um, concern and so we will tend to worry about our debts we will worry about our financial situation when he's transiting uh, in this realm so uh, restructure also Saturn is restructuring restructure your will restructure and organize your tax situation um, create maybe you might need to create a company rather than working as a sole trader and do some adjustments around that sort of thing uh, go visit an accountant and set up you know appropriate new systems um, Saturn is systems that need to be in place regarding uh, you know you, you, money you know, particularly money that you receive from others so you know like I said your will tax stuff um, and, and how you deal with the, the government taxes and the government levies and so forth it's a time when you can actually do well from investing in some sort of investigative research this is a house of research and um, particularly for those who are have Aquarius here cancer rising people you will be very very interested in research it's a good time to get involved in that sort of thing either yourself personally or investment wise um, and it's also the house of other people's values the eighth house is the house of other people's value systems and their standards as well their, 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 what they expect their expectations not their morals but their expectations so Saturn teaches us to work with these things other people's expectations other people's value systems it teaches us to work with them in a very mature and responsible way not frivolous not flicking the bird to people you know you expect this from me will stuff you you know we actually consider things we take things on board we will um, you know it might feel like criticism to us like I said in the beginning might feel a bit uncomfortable might feel like criticism but it is to serve a purpose that is going to teach us better things how do you know if someone says you need to restructure your business so you're no longer a sole trader you're a, you're actually a company well we take that on board you know that's something that somebody else values but we'll consider it is that appropriate for me and we, we might make some restructuring because of that so we will be more considerate of other people's values and we will um, analyze and judge the how relevant those value systems and those standards are for us during this time now at the same time as we've got Saturn in the eighth house in the Hindu system he is also trying uh, making an aspect to the second house opposite him the fifth house uh, down here and obviously the eighth house where he is and the tenth house so all of these realms of life second fifth eighth and tenth are getting um, a triggering by this energy in the Vedic system of blockage and restriction and holding back by Saturn so what does this mean well in the second house you might experience and look you can take or leave this Vedic system um, or the Western system see which one aligns best for you leave a comment in the comment section about what um, worked best for you what aligned best for you but uh, in the second house instance it's going to mean a blockage perhaps of finances and resources maybe a, a blockage of the self-worth that you do or do not have as well um, also you might find that, there, that during this transit that there is a blockage in some sense to family which is in the Vedic system seen by the second house too um, the fifth house indicates some difficulties and challenges being felt with children that, that um, might occur uh, and when we're looking at the eighth house obviously in the Vedic system they also associate this house with sexuality and there can be obstacles and blockages to the sexual expression and the sexual experience with this um, particular aspect and also the tenth house delays with career success de delays with career progress that can come from this aspect from Saturn to the tenth house in this instance so that's what we see uh, when we have Saturn making a transit through the eighth house and how it impacts our life. 
Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I will have another video for you next week all about Saturn and his transit through the ninth house.